Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 26. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to edit our volumetric efficiency table, both in the actual values of the table and then our breakpoints, making sure we have everything configured. We're going to have a couple of examples here, naturally aspirated and forced induction examples, so that you're able to build a base volumetric efficiency table to get your engine fired up and you'll have really good values to begin your tuning process. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with editing our volumetric efficiency table. This is going to be how we scale our breakpoints and scale our actual volumetric efficiency value. So we have a good starting point based on the type of engine that we're tuning. So I'm going to go through a couple different examples here. One for a naturally aspirated engine, one for a supercharged engine running lower boost, and then one for a turbo engine running a much higher boost level. What we're going to find here is that scaling things out, setting our table up specific to our application is going to be important. We want to make sure that we have something that's going to be valid. So for example here, the first type of engine I'm going to go through and just show how to set up here in a volumetric efficiency table is going to be a naturally aspirated engine. On a naturally aspirated engine, we're not going to be having manifold pressure higher than atmospheric pressure, which is, let's say, at sea level, zero PSI. If you're at elevation, it'll be less than that. But let's assume we're at sea level, zero PSI, as we look here in the top of our table, this column right here is going to correlate to that zero PSI. So notice what we have here. We have our breakpoints at the top. This is based on manifold pressure here for the speed density volumetric efficiency strategy. And then we have engine speed over at the side here. So we have these two breakpoint axes. And again, naturally aspirated engine, we're not in at sea level. We're going to be here right around zero PSI max. We're not going to be using anything on the upper portion of our table. So all of this is essentially not going to be used and we don't need to have it there. We can actually get rid of it. Now, likewise, if we have an engine, let's say, that spins to something like five or 6,000 RPM, well then obviously all of the other breakpoints here won't be needed. So we can shrink down the breakpoints and be more specific to the actual engine that we're dealing with. There's no advantage to having all these additional breakpoints and having all these other volumetric efficiency values in the table if we're never going to hit and use any of those particular cell points. We want to have this more focused, um, more specific to the engine that we're dealing with. So you have to know first what RPM you're going to spin your engine to and be realistic about this. If you have a stock engine, let's say it spins to 8,000, well, you're not going to go and scale this most likely much past maybe 8,500. I usually like to give a little bit of wiggle room in RPM breakpoints as I'm scaling these out so that if I do rev the engine a little bit higher, if I decide to bump up the rev a little bit more, I have a breakpoint that's going to be in the table and I don't have to go back in here and rescale it, although it's not a big deal to do that, just one less thing to think about. The same is going to go for our manifold pressure. If the engine is naturally aspirated and only going to hit zero PSI, I'll have a breakpoint here just slightly higher so it can account for something like a ram air effect from a cold air intake or an intake that's designed for our engine. So we want to have a little bit higher scaling, but something that's realistic that's going to make sense when we're building our table out. Now let's take a look at how we can scale out the values here in our table and start to work with this and build a naturally aspirated table. The very first thing we need to do is learn how to edit the breakpoint values. That is going to be, again, the values that we find in our axes here. Manifold pressure, engine speed. If we go up here into our table axis setup, this allows us to access the breakpoints and rescale these breakpoints to whatever we'd like. Let's learn what we're going to do here. So we're going to jump into our breakpoint axis setup and we're going to go in here and take a look. So what we're finding here is that we have the ability to actually edit the manifold pressure and the engine RPM. Engine RPM here is on the side, manifold pressure here at the top. And if you pay attention here, if we look negative 29.5, that's full engine vacuum, that's going to be our very first breakpoint. The next one is negative 26.6. And we can see as we go up our table here, those exact values match in our breakpoint axes set up here. So we can actually change any of the values here, which will rescale our values here. Now you always want to scale out your breakpoints before you start doing your tuning. If you've changed your breakpoints after you've done your tuning process, you're gonna have to go back in and adjust some things in the table because you're changing the way it's indexing these breakpoints. So it's always best to have a solid game plan when you're building your base file. Realistically understand where the maximum pressure is going to be reached, also where the maximum RPM is going to be reached, and scale just slightly past that. So getting back here to scaling out our manifold pressure, we want to go and account for up to zero PSI of manifold pressure. That would be, if I'm at sea level, which I am, 
That's going to be the maximum pressure my engine can realistically. Um, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.